this is a whole department, a whole division full of people with different specialties, including physics and medicine and biology. In my field in particular, the role of the chemist is to incorporate radioactivity into specific molecules that can do a specific targeting job in the body to identify specific diseases. So we interact with the biologists and the medics, cancer clinicians, cardiovascular physicians, for example, to identify clinical problems that need to be solved, come up with solutions and find a way to incorporate the required type of radioactivity to do the imaging into molecules that will identify those particular diseases. I'm a biologist. I try and harness the power of radiation all around us for medical good. We take different types of radioactivity and we attach it to compounds that when you inject it into a person would travel through the bloodstream until eventually it finds and homes to a tumour cell. Once we've made a new imaging device or new treatment and we are happy that it works in cells, before we can go into the clinic we then have to test it in a living organism to see if it works there as well. It's a really exciting area to be involved in because what we do is we inject radioactive substances into patients. These are trace amounts of radioactivity, very, very tiny. And then we wait a while and we use our fantastic cameras to see where the tracer has gone. So if the scan tells us that a treatment's working well, then we can maybe offer that patient less intensive treatment. But if the scan shows us that the treatment isn't working well, then we need to use a different approach. Doing that type of imaging means that we can cure more patients with fewer side effects. One of the things we can do is take one of the traces we use for imaging and convert it into a medicine that we can use for treatment. One of the best examples of that is radium. And over the past 20 years or so, we have worked out how to use it safely as a medicine and we're now using it to treat men who've got prostate cancer that spread into their bones. The type of radiation we're using travels such a short distance inside the bone that we get a very high dose exactly where we want it but without any damage at all to the healthy parts that are surrounding the cancer spot. Here at the centre we are creating new compounds from the chemistry testing them in cells, testing them in animals, and then going all the way to the clinic. And we're doing this with several really exciting new compounds for cancer right now. And all of us need to work together to make the work that we do impact on patients. This is a big thing for us. We are very gratified by seeing the work that we do making a difference to patients' lives. We are a team of chemists, biologists, physicists and clinicians trying to harness radioactivity to image and treat disease in patients. At the time of our hot stuff stand at the Summer Science Exhibition in 2018, we had just developed a new radioactive tracer to detect prostate cancer and begun testing it in patients. Now we've used it in over a thousand patients and in about a third of them helped avoid the wrong treatment decision. Successes like these are stimulating government investment in radio tracer research, including a new £6.4 million program at King's in partnership with Imperial College and Southampton University. These really are exciting times. As a biologist, I'm really interested in how radioactivity affects your cells, both those used for imaging and for therapy. Now, not all radioactivity is the same. Some travel long distances and others are more potent. I've been researching these electrons called Auger electrons. They don't travel very far, so theoretically, if you could get it into a tumour, it would only affect the cancer cells and not the healthy tissues around it. So far, we've had really promising animal work showing the potency of these Auger electrons, but now my challenge is to find a way to get higher amounts of these electrons into a cancer when we inject it into the bloodstream. We've been using a type of medical imaging called PET which can show us where radioactive traces are located in the body. And we've been using PET to find out if cancer treatment is working effectively for patients. We were able to show in a large trial that PET worked much better than conventional CT scanning at showing if cancer treatment had worked for patients with a type of cancer of the lymph glands, which is called follicular lymphoma. We've now started a new trial in patients with follicular lymphoma using PET to find out if chemotherapy treatment has been successful 
And if so, whether we can avoid patients needing to then go on and have prolonged antibody treatment to stop the cancer from coming back. In the Nuclear Medicine Department at Guy's Hospital, we're continuing to explore new treatments for men with advanced prostate cancer. We joined a global study that used radioactive gallium scans like this one to seek out prostate cancer cells anywhere in the body. Then we replace the gallium with radioactive lutetium, which can actually kill cancer cells. That gave us a selective treatment that attacked the tumour directly, but was unlikely to cause major side effects to normal tissues. I'm delighted to join the team at King's as part of the Mithras Research Programme. Here in Southampton, we'll be developing new compounds that enable us to bind radioactive fluorine 18. This is really interesting for medical imaging in cancer and other diseases. Important factors are how quickly the fluorine 18 can bind to the metal complex we are creating and whether it remains intact when injected into a human. With lots of different metal ions in the periodic table to choose from, we can tune the properties to create a new family of tracers for development towards PET imaging agents in collaboration with the team at King's. At Imperial College, my group of inorganic and organic chemists design and synthesize a whole range of imaging probes and radioactive compounds. Then we collaborate with colleagues at King's College to fully evaluate these compounds in a radiochemical and biological setting. With them, we have an iterative cycle of design, synthesis and evaluation that helps us decide which compounds can be translated to the clinic. In this programme grant, we're really keen to engage with the wider public and patient groups. And so we'll be holding a series of community events to help shape the science that we do. Apart from working at home, lockdown has meant no football to watch, meaning no excuse to let the back garden get into an even worse state. During lockdown, I have learnt how to do arts and crafts. Not very good at it, but I had to keep my young kids entertained, and here's an example. <laughs> and I've made homemade bread and scones for the first time ever. And I've been really cheered up and actually blown away by an explosion of wild poppies in a big field at the end of my garden. I really hope it cheers you up too. I've been doing lots of baking. That's the closest I get to experimental work these days. And lots of walking with the dog, of course, to try to burn off these extra calories. So during lockdown, I've been staring at the globe and dreaming of my next overseas conference. <laughs>